Welcome back everyone, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for being here today to this new episode of Music with Nick. And as you can see, yes, I'm going to do some Ozzy Osbourne tracks, but in reality, this um, this marathon is a Randy Rhodes uh, marathon. Um, and this is by um, Eric T. We, we gave you the name T, Eric T, because we have three Erics. And... Um, and it says here Randy Rose Marathon, and it says most of his most of his music for these songs was written by Randy Rhodes with the help of bassist Bob Daisley, who helped come up with bridges and breaks for Randy's riffs. Bob Daisley also wrote most of the lyrics. Ozzy's first two albums with Randy are the best work he ever did. And so, um, I have you know I have not listened to a lot of these two albums but i do have them and i want to credit um uh, tony for sending us these two albums they're still in their wrapping because we're still waiting for a bigger room once we buy you know our own house or something we're going to have them on display right now everything is pretty much as you see something is displayed but most of the stuff is you know in boxes or uh but i remember many many years ago um at least I remember that I listened to Mr. Crowley, but I honestly don't remember it too well. It's been too long and uh, all the other stuff. But I, I do own these two records, um, Blizzard of Oz and A Diary of a Madman. And I've always known that Randy Rhodes, just from reading, you know, uh, you know, some some of his licks and uh, just by, you know, roaming around the Internet uh when i'm look when i would look for you know arpeggios or scales or you know like kind of like uh kind of like different and harder sections to play randy rhodes always comes up and i know he tragically died in a airplane crash and i just i don't know why i just told the story to alexia i don't know why i was talking about randy rhodes and then and i and then i thought he had died uh it, in the in a bus uh and then a plane had hit the bus but he was actually in a plane and um the plane the plane's wing crashed into the bus where Ozzy and the band was they were kind of like trying to you know wake him up or you know and tragically the plane kind of like hit the bus and then they crashed and they everyone in the plane passed away unfortunately you know and randy rhodes was among them and that was just you know an, an incredible loss for you know music and guitar and just i guess randy rhodes was just just you know at the height of his career and also just playing incredible guitar and i've seen some videos and he was just like on a different level this guy so it's just like such a such such a such a tragedy you know like a lot of musicians like that stevie ray vaughn you know a lot of like what ifs you know what if we still had them you know but yeah so this is gonna be uh pretty much focused on you know on his writing and his soloing and all that good stuff so again eric thank you so much this is my first Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> request and Randy Rhodes, you know, together, even though we're going to focus more on Randy Rhodes, the technicality, you know, his speed, how fluent and clean he was in his playing. And I remember uh, I had a friend who taught me um, D, the, the song D, and I've never really had the, sh I've never really looked at the sheet music. I have my own version because I kind of like implement my own classical stuff into but I should learn like the original D by Randy Rhodes one day. But I've always played it like my in my own kind of way. So, but yeah, it would be interesting to learn. But yeah, I can't wait to, to hear all this. I mean, Ozzy, you know, just left Black Sabbath. And then, you know, I don't know the timeline exactly, you know, because I'm not that familiar with Black Sabbath. But uh, this is, I guess, when he went solo. And this is also before Zach Wilde who's also an amazing player. But yeah, Randy Rhodes, I guess, is just universally loved by everyone who plays guitar and pretty pretty much everyone who listens to heavy metal. You know, he was just one of a kind and uh, 
you know, just tragically, you know, his life got was cut short. And I don't even know how old he was. I think he was only like 22 or something. Let me see. So imagine what he would play now. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. So he, um, let's see how old he was. He's 25, 25 years old. So, and having those kind of chops at 25, imagine at, you know, I mean, he would be now 82. Wow. Um, so in his late sixties, you know, wow, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, I guess he would have, you know, release such good material uh, we'll never know you know unfortunately but yeah so again thank you so much everybody for being here you know if you're a randy rhodes fan welcome if you're new to the channel welcome if you're an aussie fan welcome we've done some black sabbath reactions which are, which are amazing as well and um but yeah this is for randy rhodes thank you eric for sponsoring this and let's get into it so uh, we're going to do Mr. Crowley. So that one I'm sure I've heard, but I just wouldn't remember anything about it, like the solo or anything. Then Revelation, Mother Earth. No idea. From the same album, Blizzard of Oz. Tonight, I've never heard. And uh, from Diary of a Madman and Diary of a Madman from Diary of a Madman. And I've chosen, I've been, I chose the uh, 40th anniversary editions because I'm sure they sound a little bit, you know, better uh here on spotify so i hope that's cool it's only four songs though uh, because i guess you know the length is uh the one that we need for the marathon and again thank you so much here we go i know i'm talking way way too much but i'm just excited i wanted to you know talk a little bit about randy Rhodes. and if you're a fan you won't mind you know <laughs> so <laughs> all right so here we go uh this is from 19 um let's see does it say it says 2020 <laughs> apparently this album came out in 2020 um blizzard of oz it's from 1980 all right all right so here we go can't wait here we go mr crowley So, for example, this, I, I had no idea that it starts with keyboard. So I have literally no collection. Like, uh, so it's not even fair. I can't, I'm, yes, I, I just want to be honest with all these videos. And I always say when I've heard something, but I, I did not remember this. Like, I, I maybe I've listened to it like once or twice. And that's, I don't know, when I was, you know, like a preteen or something, you know. So <laughs> I don't know. Um but this is awesome. It sounds really dark and, you know, uh, really cool. The keyboards here, the whole, I, I, I rewound a little bit. So let's, let's go.
Wow, man. That was just sick. Really cool. I'm never really... um. So th this is uh, pretty much Mr. Crowley, the, the, the you know, the tarot, ta I think tarot, I don't know what it's called. Uh, my mom had a set uh, and I think, I don't know, I think they're were from, well, I don't know his first name, uh, Crowley, but um, she had one of those. <laughs> um, man, uh, what a cool, you know, the lyrics, awesome. Um Obviously, you know, like I didn't know, and I do, I still don't know if if Mister if uh, let's let's look up his name Crowley, if he was like satanic. Um, Colin. Alistair Crowley. Well, you know. Honestly, I couldn't care less, you know, like, I don't believe in that stuff anyways. Um, but I do like the, the tarot, ta tarot, tarot, I don't know. But like the whole satanic bullshit, you know, like, I just don't believe in that crap. I'm sorry. You know, um, I, yes, of course I believe in good and evil and, and, but like actual, like a, a hell like we're already on it, you know. We're already in hell. Um, but while being on Earth, you know, that's pretty much. Uh, that's what I believe, because I'm not particularly religious. So you know, the whole hell thing. I do res, you know, I respect everyone and their beliefs, but to go to hell, um, maybe you know, but not the way it's depicted, uh, depicted in in books uh, i'm sure there could be like an afterlife that's horrible because you were some kind of an asshole and well deserved but i don't know you know just like the whole satanic thing uh, i just don't buy it you know i may i just believe there's a lot of negativity on uh, uh you know on this planet and a lot of uh yeah you yeah there's a lot of evil and uh but just like to connect it with the devil and hell and all that. I don't know. I just don't buy it. But um, I just wanted to talk about the guitar playing here. This was amazing. 1980. I don't think any... Because it reminds me, of course, you know, the melodic minor scale and the the fast alternate picking. It's It reminds me a lot of like Ingwie Malmsteen. And uh, and even that, that section that... That literally, I would say, uh, there's a section in Ingwie Malmsteen's fourth album called, um, wait, yeah, Rising Force. I'm sure that Ingwie Malmsteen kind of like borrowed that from Randy Rhodes, and I'm sure he this this uh, Randy Rhodes must have been a huge inspiration to Ingwie Malmsteen. Uh, j just like uh, Richie Blackmore and uh, Alan Holdsworth and um, Uli John Roth by from Scorpions. That guy was also on a sick level. That's the only guy that I've heard in this, like on a '70s album. The one uh, called, I think, let me see the, the that song, uh, "Sales of Karen." Holy moly, that is the, the crazy the craziest shredding that I've ever heard in the 70s. Like there's nothing that comes near. And I'm sure that Ingwie Malmsteen took a lot from Uli John Roth. And I don't know, maybe even, you know, uh, Randy Rhodes. But I mean, you know, these guys were at crazy levels in their 20s. And, um, you know, the scales and... 16th notes you know playing so fluently and so effortlessly and uh it's just wonderful you know to hear so i'm sure obviously ozzy got a huge bump up you know and i'm not saying that tommy i uh tommy uh is it to tony tony iomi um is not a good player he's an amazing player and he came up with the most demonic riffs known to man you know but just i think as a shredder like Randy Rhodes is just like, I think was on a different level. And I mean, if you, 
There are so many other shredders that are, were not into metal, like Aldi Miola or Alan Holdsworth, that obviously could play like this, but they were just not playing in metal bands. But for a, a metal guitar player, I think Randy Rhodes was pretty much like, you know, the bar was pretty much set there, you know. And then Ingwie Malmsteen came in and basically blew everybody away, you know. At the time, I saw, I just saw an interview where they talk about this video that they made called uh, We're Stars, and it was like this, um, uh, it was something like Band-Aid, you know, uh, but in metal, and uh, all these guitar players, all these amazing guitar players came together, and they were all pretty much, you know, they're fast and, you know, metal, and but Ingwie was just like on a different level because he was playing these, Paganini-esque, you know, arpeggios and, and just like these crazy lines and and had amazing legato going on, which he obviously, you know, uh, took from Alan Holdsworth. He says he was a huge inspiration. And if you listen to the album, you know, Inspirations, there's all these bands, you know, like uh, Deep Purple and Rainbow and and Kansas and Scorpions and, and Jimmy, Jimi Hendrix. And they were all like, UK, which is Alan Holdsworth, and that was this like inspiration to to get to. But he always, I think he always wanted to be like Paganini on the guitar, you know. So, but yeah, really cool, amazing. I was just like, I really, I really, I've never really focused on Randy's playing like today, which is amazing, you know. So let's keep going. Uh, Revelations, Mother Earth. So that one I've. I'm sure I've not heard, but let's go with that one.
so that just ended up very ab abruptly very very awesome super neoclassical the solo dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo, you know that that lick and um just man so cool i loved also the piano um solo and um the whole song so this album is where d is on and of course crazy train which i've played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and i always i don't know why but i always got to play the solo so that was also very very helpful to learn you know and uh note per note and you know the little tapping section and then you know there's some really cool legato in there and right now i could really hear that legato you know like um, the way he was playing those scales and what a cool what a good player man and uh what an epic album, man. Uh, so, yeah. So, Crazy Train is on here. D. And I, I thought it... I didn't know it was D-E-E. -E. Um, um, and then Mr. Crowley. I guess that's all I know. So, I don't even know if I own this album, you know. Um, but, well, now I own it. You know, now I have it thanks to Tony. Again, shout out to him for sending us not just those two. I think he sent us like the entire Aussie collection. And um, I just remember songs like I think Bark at the Moon and stuff like that that were from the 90s or 2000s. I don't even know what year those are, but uh, and uh. I don't know. I just like I'm not that familiar. I'm just more familiar with Ozzy from Black Sabbath because uh, we we had this band and we used to play Paranoid and Iron Man and uh, what else? What else did we play? And Iron Man, that was pretty proggy, like for, you know, a bunch of like 15 year olds. All those time signatures, really cool. Like we were crazy. <laughs> and we didn't really know what we were doing, but we just like, you know, practice, practice, and until we got it down. And I remember when we first played that at that bar, the actual band of the bar they were all like what the hell are these kids doing you know playing this music and i was learning at the time like like these sweeps you know like ingwe malmstein style and and we just like <laughs> we are something else because in a little town like puerto vallarta mexico you know nobody's gonna play that kind of stuff so we were just very unique very very cool and um yeah but this is awesome this is so far man randy rhodes he was just on a different level at that age shh, amazing okay so this is from the um let's see i do want to look up diary of a madman was that before because Let's see. No, not 81. Okay, uh, so this was the follow-up of um, Blizzard. I love it. Blizzard of Oz instead of Wizard of Oz. <laughs> um, yeah, the second studio album by English heavy metal singer Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go for it. So... What do we have here? Uh, tonight is the next song. So here we go. All right. Okay, it kind of like bled into the song. Let's just play it from the beginning. One, two, three. <laughs>
Wow. Oh man, I wish they would have left that like on instead of a fade out. He was just getting started there. Um, man, so good. The bass here. I love that you included this track because you could really like, since you're talking about, you know, the bass player who was guiding Randy a little bit, you know, um, on this composition and stuff, you know, the riffs and bridges and, and, and breaks and stuff. That was really cool because you really could hear the bass here, you know, taking a little bit of a step forward, you know, that was really cool. Um, really great song. And then the solo. It's so crazy that nowadays, you know, with all this technology and all these books that we have and um, available and, you know, Guitar Pro and, you know, programs where you can slow down the music and, and, um, and you have, you know, like 12 year olds, 13 year olds playing like this, like incredible. It's just insane. Obviously, you know, these original players, you know, they didn't have all these tools. They had to come up with this stuff. You know, that's what's so different about seeing someone on YouTube performing this at perfection. But he's like, he didn't come up with it. You know, that's the difference. And, uh, that's what I love about these players, you know, when you mention, you know, people like Van Halen and, you know, Randy Rhodes and, you know, like Uli John Roth and, you know, all these like amazing shredders. They came up with this stuff, you know, uh, they invented this, this way of playing. And that's pretty much, you know, that's so much, it's different, you know, to, um, then copying it you know perfectly and having all the time in the world you know as a child you know <laughs> which is so cool um but yeah i just like sometimes i'm just like blown away how what amazing guitar players there are these are the, the, these are just kids and maybe they don't even pursue you know music but they can literally play like jason becker you know kind of stuff marty friedman you know uh, Metallica, whatever, like really, you know, really hard stuff. Um, and they're only like 12, <laughs> 12, 13 years old and they can, they can like, they could be part of a band back in those days, you know, <laughs> it's incredible what, what, uh, nowadays, you know, kids can do when they really put their mind to it, you know, with all the tools that we have nowadays, you know. Because all the techniques have been revealed. That was kind of like beautiful back in the day that you would hear something like this and you were like, wow, how is he doing that? You know, like, you know, just tapping, um, playing like sweep arpeggios, you know, um, and all this stuff like alternate picking that gives you so much speed, you know, um, you know, and all these different effects, palm muting, you know, um, playing harmonics, pinch harmonics, all these techniques were all pretty much secret, you know, and then you could just hear something and you were like, wow, how is he doing that? Oh, when you would play like a, an arpeggio and then tap the last note, so you would make it extra long, you know, all that stuff. You couldn't see it. There was no YouTube. So you could just be like, how is he doing that? You know? So yeah, it's, it's just uh, so cool that these like legends provided a provided us with the with this amazing stuff that we can learn you know on the guitar and it's still like not easy you know you really have to put on the time it's not just like oh just because it's available you have to sit down and learn it so it's not just but i mean as the the younger you are you know if you're like seven years old eight years old and you start play, at 15 you're gonna be like a monster you know if you really play every day and i know kids like that i have you know, I have friends, you know, they're 14, 15 year old kids. They're just like, like they, they could be like in, in a, in a metal band already, you know, but they're like going to school and they just do it, you know, on the side for fun, which is crazy. All right. So this is the title track, Diary of a Madman for Diary of a, from Diary of a Madman. Let's give it up for another track here. Let's go. Thank you. 
Wow.
that was incredibly freaking heavy um for because i was like wow 1980 so that's basically the year the first iron maiden album came out you know so we have like so i looked up um heavy metal albums released in 1980 so ace of spades by motorhead and i just did today i did a motorhead marathon then heaven and hell by black sabbath and then blizzard of oz and um I guess this one was a year after, 81. But, so I, I should, I guess I should look up. But it's British Steel, which I love by Judas Priest. But let's say 81. Diary of a Madman is the first one. Because I was like, what? this is so heavy, you know? So what came, so Killers, okay, by Iron Maiden. There's, I know, the point of, point of Entry, I know that by Judas Priest. But there's ACDC for those who for those about to rock Motley Crue, Black Sabbath. Fair warning, that's an amazing album by Van Halen. Um Triumph. The Allied Forces. Rush, Moving Pictures. Wow, there's a lot of good stuff that came out that year, you know. Renegade, Thin Lizzy. That is heavy as heavy. The movie came out heavy metal. What are you fair warning? Uh oh that's I thought the I thought the the band fair warning. Um um man awesome really really cool I love it you know um I was gonna say something else um because I was like wait th this is so heavy like how how can this be so heavy but I guess you know they were already Albums being released with that kind of heaviness, you know, like distortion wise. And, um, but this was just amazing. But there was something else I wanted to talk about, but I wanted to pause, but then I didn't. I didn't want to ruin it. But, uh, sometimes you just have to pause. Otherwise, you, you forget what you were going to talk about. But hey, this was just amazing. Thank you so much, Eric T, uh, for this awesome marathon. Um, uh, this was just great. Thank you. Thank you so much because yeah, nobody else has ever requested Randy Rhodes, um, or Ozzy, you know, on the channel. So I love, you know, more metal and, um, and uh, I hope more metal fans, you know, also subscribe to the channel and, uh, you know, and, and I hope we can do more metal. I, I, I guess, you know, I guess I'm just going to have to do more videos with Alexia, you know, like random you know, random videos, um, of ba bands that I don't even know. There's so many bands on this that I have, that I'm not familiar with, you know, like Raven and, you know, Riot, um, Def Leppard, I guess, you know, a couple of songs, but Venom, we got Samson. I think I've heard of that. I think, I don't know if Samson, I, I don't know if Bruce Dickinson was in that band at the time. I think so. Except... I think I've heard them. They're from Germany. Um, but just there's so much good stuff here. Rainbow, UFO, you know. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, what I wanted to talk about real quickly is that I'm kind of sad because we went to see this concert. And uh, we got to see Judas Priest, but originally Ozzy. And I love Judas Priest, don't get me wrong. That's That was my favorite band, even though I had never seen Metallica. And we saw on that weekend six bands. It was uh, Iron Maiden, Guns N' Roses, the first night. And Iron Maiden was just amazing. Guns N' Roses, unfortunately, was not good at all. It was just like, it, the music was amazing, but the singing Axel Rose, he, he, can't, he can't do it any longer. And then the second night was... Judas Priest and ACDC. So that was like, it was going to be Ozzy Osbourne and ACDC. So just to be able to see ACDC, you know, because they're older. And also Judas Priest, I mean, Rob Halford is in his 70s and he just like killed it. But Ozzy, just like he said, I can't do it, you know. I'm... So that would have been a cool opportunity. And then the last day was Metallica and Tool. And I'd never seen Tool or Metallica. So it was just amazing. But yeah, that was kind of like, I wish... I could have seen Ozzy and Judas Priest, you know, instead maybe Tool. It was maybe 
not the best, you know, festival for Tool to play because they're so proggy and a lot of people were kind of disconnected with the whole um with the whole Tool performance and I love Tool, but people were like there for rock and roll and heavy metal and that was too like too progressive. There was too much for a lot of people. So people were just like, you know, looking they were not really paying attention and we were like tripping, you know. But uh, yeah, that's I wanted to talk about that. But well, again, thank you so, so much for this. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comment section and I'll see you all in the next one.